In this presentation, we will explore the three design possibilities of X-ray grids. X-ray grids have three common characteristics. They are ratio, frequency, and design. While ratio has the greatest effect on grid performance and the likelihood of repeats due to grid errors, an understanding of the pros and cons of grid design is important. Before we begin, let's talk about the problem of grid cutoff. Grid cutoff is defined as a loss of radiation intensity caused by the grid absorbing remnant radiation that should reach the image receptor. Cutoff is normally seen in the periphery of large images and is parallel to the direction of the grid lines. Here are two lateral skull radiographs. The one on the right is suffering from grid cutoff. Notice the white borders in the front and behind the skull caused by the grid stopping information carrying radiation from reaching the image receptor. In this simulation, the grid lines are running parallel to the coronal plane of the anatomy. Here we have two parallel grids. These grids have grid strips that are parallel to one another across the entire width of the grid. Notice that when radiation from the tube intersects this grid, rays in the center of the beam penetrate the grid without a problem. As we move away from the center of the grid, the peripheral rays angle to the point where they are stopped by the lead strips of the grid. This is grid cutoff. Cutoff is more pronounced in high ratio grids. Notice that if one increases the source to image distance, cutoff becomes less severe. This is because at a longer distance you use rays that are more from the center of the beam and these rays diverge less. They are closer to perpendicular to the grid. So one can expect that you will see some amount of cutoff on all parallel grids. The amount of cutoff will be more pronounced with short SID exposures, large field size, or higher grid ratios. The opposite of the above list will also produce less cutoff. Probably parallel grids are more useful for non-bucky exposures or portable work. Parallel grids should not exceed an 8 to 1 ratio. On this slide, we have two grids. On the left is a familiar parallel grid, and on the right is what we call a focused grid. What makes a focused grid unique is you move from the center of the grid, and the lead strips are progressively angled to the center of the grid. With the parallel grid, when radiation is projected through it, the grid cuts off the peripheral rays. With the focused grid, the angle of the lead strips mimics the angle of the X-ray beam, thereby eliminating cutoff. If we draw imaginary lines extending from the lead strips in our focused grid, we will see that they all converge at a point above the center line of the grid. This line is called the focus or radius of the grid. The focal spot of the X-ray tube should be positioned near this distance and centered to the grid to allow it to effectively eliminate grid cutoff. Along with the center of the grid, most grids have a label designating the important characteristics of a grid. Here's a fictional company's information label. This is a 12 to 1, 60 line grid and can be used within a range of 37 to 43 inches to prevent cutoff artifacts. 
This grid would probably be used in a table bucky that includes a reciprocating mechanism due to its low frequency. Note that this grid has a tube side, and if the grid is incorrectly positioned with this side away from the tube, an extreme amount of grid cutoff will occur. What are the pros and cons of a focused grid? On the pro side of the ballot, focused grids eliminate grid cutoff. This is their main advantage. On the con side, to use this grid properly, you must pill spot near the grid focal length along the center line of the grid. And the grid must be positioned with its tube side up. Since parallel grids don't have these restrictions, they are better suited for portable or out of bucky views. Finally, focused grids are more grids are more expensive to produce because special care needs to be used to assemble the grid with the lead strips angled correctly. The third type of grid construction is called a nonlinear grid. Nonlinear grids are basically two grids in a single package. For our example, let's start with a 4 to 1 grid with the strips oriented across the slide. To that, we'll layer a second 4 to 1 grid with the strips perpendicular to the first. Wrap the whole affair in an aluminum package. Add lines on the wrapper to notify the user that this is a crisscross grid. Crisscross grids have the advantage of superior ability to remove scatter when compared to their linear counterparts. A disadvantage is that you can't do any views that require a tube angle because you'll always be angling across one of the two grids. Thank you for your kind attention. This will end the presentation on grid design.